When it comes to any biryani, people always link it up with chicken or mutton and sometimes we just like to stick to the original forms of recipes. But just substitute vegetables in place of the meat and you get this very delicious dish packed with flavor and any recipe containing vegetables, I consider it to be very very healthy. Namaskar and welcome to Curries with Boombi and today I will show you step by step how to make a perfect vegetable biryani. Now guys, the main structure of biryani is the rice. I always use long-grained, good quality basmati rice. We don't make biryani every day, so whenever you are making it, please use good quality rice and you won't be disappointed. The next very important step is to rinse the rice several times till the water runs clear. Rinsing the rice thoroughly will get rid of that excess surface starch from the rice, resulting in a fluffy rice once cooked with each grain remaining separate. Soak the rice in water for 30 to 45 minutes and please do use a timer or keep track of the time or else the rice will become mushy. After 30 minutes, drain all that water using a colander and let the excess water drip off. Next coming to the aromatic spice blend. I need 10 cardamoms. Remove the outer shells. Some people put these cardamom shells in their sugar container and adds them to their tea. My husband doesn't like any added flavor to his tea. You know what I do? I leave them in my trash bin under the trash bag to perfume the bin. I know you are laughing, but do try it and let me know whether you like that idea or not. Okay, so you need a fairly fine powder. To this I added a teaspoon of ground mace, half a teaspoon of ground nutmeg, and a teaspoon of garam masala powder. And your aromatic spice blend for biryani is all ready. Coming to marinating the vegetables. Cauliflower cut into large chunky pieces so that they do not break. We also need carrots and potatoes. I will also use frozen green beans. Now I always blanch the beans before freezing them. That's why I will be adding the beans later. But if you are using fresh beans, then please add them along with the other vegetables. Next comes a cup of plain unflavored yogurt. My vegan friends, you can use any plant-based unflavored yogurt. This is black cumin, also known as shahi jeera. It gives this nice flavor to the biryani. But if you do not get them, don't worry, then use just regular cumin seeds. A tablespoon of ground coriander, just half a teaspoon of turmeric powder, and a tablespoon of Kashmiri red chili powder. Or you can even use regular chili powder, but in that case use just a teaspoon. Then mix everything very well. And if you're one of those thinking, you, she's using her hands, or how gross, and how this, and how that. Listen, I always wash my hands thoroughly before handling any food. And I really dislike using those gloves. And you know what? If you are grossed out, then please don't watch this video. Okay, back to the biryani. Allow to marinate for 30 minutes while you proceed with the next step. For biryani, you need a large heavy bottomed wide pot or pan. I need a third of a cup of oil and a tablespoon of ghee. You must be thinking that's too much of oil. But guys, trust me, you don't want a dry biryani that won't taste good. My vegan friends, you can just leave out the ghee. It will still taste very delicious. Sliced onions go in along with a sprinkle of salt. Fry the onions on medium-high heat first. Then once they start developing this little brown color along the edges, lower the heat to medium-low and stir them continuously. There are several tricks to get that even browning of onions so that all the slices get browned equally. I have explained everything in detail in my lentil rice recipe. I have given the link to that video in the description box below this video or it is showing on the YouTube card above. Do not wait for the onions to turn too brown. As soon as they start developing this color, switch off your stove and take them out onto a paper towel. Spread them out immediately. Heat back on and don't be bothered if some stray onions are left in the pan. Whole spices go in, a dried bay leaf, green cardamoms and cinnamon stick. Then the next set of aromatics, finely grated ginger and garlic. 
Fry on medium heat for about a minute so that the raw smell of ginger and garlic goes away. And then it's time for the marinated veggies to enter the scene along with all that bowl goodness. Now if you're following me for a while, you know my rules whenever it comes to cooking with yogurt. I tell you to switch off the heat of your stove, then switch back on heat and I'm very picky about that. But for a biryani recipe, it's an exception. Even if the yogurt curdles, I don't mind because everything will be mixed with the rice and nobody will be able to make it out. So don't be bothered if you see the yogurt is curdling. Keep stirring continuously though and do your best and soon those milk solids will disappear. But do not get disappointed even if they don't disappear because the rice will cover it up for you. Okay, keep stirring continuously on medium heat until the gravy comes up to a boil. After that, keep it on medium high heat and stir from time to time till all the moisture dries up. Once you get this dry kind of look, it's time to add about 3 quarters of a cup of hot water along with salt, then a teaspoon of that aromatic spice blend that you had made earlier and about half of the brown onion. At this time, I will be adding my frozen green beans. Allow everything to come up to a boil, then cover on for 8 to 10 minutes on medium-low heat. In the meantime, I allowed a big pot of water to come up to a boil. Please remember to use a lot of water so that the rice can expand. It's just like boiling pasta. I added dried bay leaves, cinnamon stick, green cardamoms and cloves and a tablespoon of oil. Once the water comes up to a rolling boil, allow it to keep boiling for 5 minutes. Then with the help of a strainer, take out the whole spices. I do not mind the bay leaves to be in there because it can be pulled out easily later on. Then add the rice along with a tablespoon of fresh lemon juice or vinegar and 2 tablespoons of salt and give a gentle stir. Bumbi, I think you are out of your mind. So much of salt? Yes, my friend, you heard it right. The water should taste just like the ocean and that's how your rice will be seasoned. But believe me, guys, it won't be overly salty because we will be draining the rice and discarding all that water. Allow the rice to come up to a rolling boil on high heat. Then lower the heat to medium high and check on the rice quite frequently from time to time. And by checking, I mean picking up a few grains and eating them. If they are too chewy, then you have to wait a little. When you feel it's not that chewy, then that's the right time to switch off your stove. You don't want the rice to turn mushy because then it will be a disaster. See, when I break it, it doesn't look mushy. Now before draining the rice, quickly keep aside about half a cup of that rice water and then drain all that water. Guys, the main part of biryani is cooking the rice properly. So if you follow all these steps, then you will be really proud of yourself. Okay, coming back to the veggies. You do not want them to turn mushy. So don't wait till they fall apart. This is why you need to cut your veggies into fairly large pieces so that you can make out each vegetable when mixed with rice. Next goes fresh mint leaves because whenever it comes to biryani, it's mint leaves. I like to tear the leaves like this when adding them. And my vegetables are done. So heat off. I will be taking out half of those vegetables along with the gravy in a separate bowl. Now comes the layering part. Spread out half of the rice on the veggies and make sure you spread it out loosely. Don't pack in the rice with a lot of pressure. No pressure here, okay guys? Then goes a tablespoon of ghee. You can even use oil. Then some of that browned up onion and few mint leaves. Then comes the final layering. The rest of the vegetables. Rice sits on top. Ghee. Browned onions. Mint leaves. Few threads of saffron and that aromatic spice blend. 
Finally, I added just a teaspoon of rose water and a tablespoon of Cura water. If you are using Cura essence, then please use just two to three drops. Unlike Cura water, Cura essence is extremely concentrated and your whole dish will be ruined if you add too much. At the same time, both rose and Cura water are optional. Back to the stove. I put a flame tamer on top of the burner. You can also place a cast iron skillet. Pot goes on top. Now add that rice water on top. Put a tight fitting lid on top. This is known as putting on dum. Means simmering the biryani on very low heat. First keep on high heat for 5 minutes. Allow that steam to build up for which you need a tight fitting lid. Or you can also put an aluminum foil on top and then place the lid on top of the foil. See how that steam is building up? After 5 minutes, lower the heat of your stove to the lowest possible mark and keep it for 15 minutes. And please do not allow anybody to come even near it because you do not want anyone to lift up that lid. After 15 minutes, switch off the heat and allow it to sit for 10 minutes off heat and then you can open the lid to reveal the moment of truth. Now there is a crucial technique to dish out. Use a flat spatula or a very flat spoon to do this. Start from one side, gently move the rice on the top, starting from the topmost layer and slowly working down. I know you are excited, so with all that excitement, you will just grab a spoon and just dig in. No, 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 please don't do that. And look how fluffy that rice looks. Each grain of rice is separate. The veggies are intact and you have this huge pot of deliciousness. I serve this with a very simple raita. And you can also serve this with my restaurant style tofu or veg kadhai or a yummy chicken curry if you are non-vegetarian. Bye bye.